I'm James Comrie, Managing Director of Wholesale Finance. Yeah, the team, uh, well, for a business that does close to 400 million a year is, is extremely small. So there's, there's around 23 of us in the team. Um, I've been here for coming on for 11 years now. The, the average length of service is seven years. So we're quite a close net team, quite passionate about uh, working together, delivering for customers. Um, and yeah, it seems to be a, a, a very positive uh, place to work. So long may it continue. I think experience comes from trust. Um, I think basically we, we set up a broad division with rules and regulations, but as we take on new members of staff, the personality of the business change. And if you get, as you tend to give individuals trust, they tend to get more expertise. Um, that feeds through to how we offer things with our customers, how we communicate with our customers, and that then provides a, a, a sort of a sense of belonging. Uh, which allows them to sort of feel settled and feel part of the team and feel that they control the dynamics and, and how the team develops. So I think that's you know, it's quite key. Yeah, so the products, that's something that's diverse you know, quite a lot over the period. So we started uh, many years ago just doing business contract hire, which in essence is funding contract hire companies for businesses like Close Brothers, etc. We've then diversed into doing extension vehicles, so when vehicles come out of contract and they're in a flexible environment. And then more recently we've moved into personal contract hire, so lending to individuals. So we've gone on a sort of a learning curve from doing non-regulated to now doing regulated products as well. So that's really helped us grow the book. Some of it is very simple, some of it's a bit more complicated. I would say the simple bit is really strong communication with our, with our clients. Uh, we've seen loads of changes over the last few years. I think that, that's all we've come to know is change. And having those communication and having a very small team allows us to sort of change our offering, come up with new products and sort of adapt to the market rather than waiting for other people to develop the products and then replicate them. Um, so that's been a big, uh, a big positive and, and allowed us to grow uh, and prosper. Um, so a, a, a lot of changes, um, I think the first point is we've seen in the last eight years we've probably seen more change than I saw in the first uh, 15 to 18 years. I think all we've come to know is change uh, and that's been the pretty norm but we've seen a lot of cycles, you know the, the majority of the lending we do is in, is in the wheeled asset, cars and like commercials environment. If I flash back to 1999 when I started <clears throat> um, moving into a sort of a senior position. Um, that was predominantly a diesel-backed fleet. Um, by 2004, it was predominantly a petrol fleet. And what we're currently seeing now is 50% of our new business is electric vehicles. So maybe in five years, we'll probably be predominantly an electric fleet. So we're seeing a constant change and shift, and we're at the forefront of that change as, as we move into new technologies. I think it's key if you want to be at the forefront of the market, um, if you want to be a generalist uh, financial institution then you can quite happily follow and, and watch what others are doing before you get involved. Um, I feel close, we like to be at the forefront of change, change is a good thing, um, you know we've seen how many one in a lifetime uh, circumstances, Brexit, Covid, uh, etc. Now Brexit again. Um, so, so from that perspective, the, the, as much as those create threats, they also create opportunity, not just for us, for our clients. So, if we're at the forefront helping our clients develop um, through a change period, then we're seen as the go-to when change arises. So, I think that's quite key, and it keeps the job interesting. It keeps the team engaged in delivering. Yeah, so unlike other areas of close, we, we, we tend to have sort of 50 strategic relationships where we obtain our business from. So, so we're, we're restricted to a certain extent in our avenues. And, and this time, seven years ago, we had 40 clients with 1.1 products. Now we've got 50 clients with 4.5 products uh, as an average. 
So those partnerships are, are absolutely key because again, if you've got a team that's dynamic and, and creates new structures, you are much more likely and willing to take risk with a client you know well to do a new product than you are to diversify into a new customer that you don't know. So that's been quite critical. Those, those partnerships have allowed us to grow the book substantially um, while, while actually not actually growing our customer base substantially. So we're adding pure value to customers and ourselves. I think the benefits are, 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 are twofold. I think one is, is longevity. If you're a specialist, you tend to be in a market for a longer period because you, you understand the cycles of risk. Um, you understand how, how positive the market can go and how negative the market can go, and you can support customers through that cycle, so it gives you an element of longevity. I think the other area it gives you is an, is an area of, of, of security because if we're a specialist in a certain asset sector or a certain customer sector, then we understand which assets to pick and which customers to pick and guide our customers through the right and wrong business to right, which protects the margin, um, which I guess is reflected in the fact that 2.2 billion lend at Close Brothers and, and our bad debt remains absolutely minimal. Plenty of things that we've, we've got on. I mean, in, in terms of one that, that excites us um, quite a lot is our is our partnership with Octopus. Um, we've taken that from a from a standing start, from an idea, and, and they built a contract hire company, which we've had uh, heavy involvement in. That's now trading, um, uh, you know, substantially well with over 750 customers in, in under 12 months. Um, that's all electric vehicles. We're now starting a project in terms of subscription and personal contract hire. Octopus have got three and a half million customers. Um, so therefore we're keen to partner with them to offer finance on electric vehicles uh, coupled with our partnerships. So that, that's one of many, um, but we just continue to look at new areas uh, of funding and, uh, and keep cracking on and uh, enjoying and smiling as we go. I mean, usership is, yeah, it's, it's something that was, has come around relatively quickly. I think we're all used to, in essence, using, subscribing to various things, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Netflix. Um, no one seems to own much anymore. And that, that concept tends to move through the asset groups, depending on the size of the asset. So that's only really finding its way into the car market, because after the house, that's the second most expensive asset most people will purchase. So naturally, it's probably the last one to shift from an ownership to a usership. So we're working with a lot of subscription companies and a lot of personal contract hire companies, which is basically shifting people from owning that vehicle into a more of a usership program. 